Hello students. Today we will be starting the lesson Nature of Matter. We see several materials or objects in our daily life and use a few of them. These materials are also called matter. So anything that you can see around you, anything that you can touch and feel is known as matter. These materials are not just like one another. You can see a lot of different things around you, right? So, supposing you are sitting on your bench, you might be able to find a book, a pen, pencil, water bottle and other things around you. So, are these objects like one another? A book does not look like a pen. The way you hold a book is different from how you hold a pen. So, these things are not like one another. But if you observe keenly, keenly means in detail. If you observe in detail, the characteristics of some materials will appear similar. Some of these materials may have similar characteristics. So everyone is eager to know what are the constituents of these materials. What are the common characteristics of these materials? So, constituents of these materials means what are these materials made up of? And the common characteristics means is there any similarities between the different types of materials around us? Let us learn that in this lesson. After studying this lesson, you will understand about matter explain the different characteristics of the matter, identify different states of matter, understand the types and the changes in the state of matter and understand about mass, density, pressure, sublimation and buoyancy. In our daily life, we see objects in different forms. The activity is collect at least 10 objects in your surroundings. Now let us see what these two children have collected. The first thing we can see here is a book. So they have a book with them. They have also collected a pen cap. Right? And they have a pencil with them also. And maybe they have went outside. They have bought a bark of a tree. This is a clip, a paper clip. They have also collected a comb. They have requested to get a comb from someone and they have collected it. They have collected a small bowl and this is an ink pot. So this is needed to write. Okay, so you can fill it to your ink pen and write. So they have collected the ink pot also. It has ink inside. And they have collected a blade of grass from outside. They have also kept a stone with them and a dice. They have kept a small flower with them and they have also kept a plate with them. The next part of the activity is list out the names of the materials you have collected by arranging them neatly. So, I have already listed out the names of the materials we saw in our previous activity. Now, let us complete this activity one by one. Observe whether the objects you have collected are as follows. If yes, put a tick mark and if no, put a cross mark. So we need to inspect the objects that we have collected one by one and then answer these questions. Have you bought any hard materials? Let us look at the objects that these children have collected to answer that question. So among these, there are a number of hard materials. For example, the stone that is present here is hard and also the bowl is also hard, the plate is also hard, correct? So you can look into the objects that you have collected and say if you have collected any hard materials. So for this, our answer is a tick mark. Next, is there any soft material? Let us look at these objects once again. So we can see here that there is a flower, there is also a blade of grass, okay. So these materials are soft materials. 
so our answer to the question are there any soft materials is also correct is there any material which could be stored in a bottle or a bowl let us go take a look at our materials again we can see here that there is an ink pot so ink inside the ink pot can be stored in a bowl therefore our answer to this question is yes we have a material that we can store inside a bowl or a bottle next question is is there any brittle material so brittle material means something that is breakable so brittle material means something that is hard but easily breakable let us see if there are any materials like that in our objects again ink pot is something that is hard but easily breakable if we drop it from a height it will break easily therefore we can say yes we did collect something that is brittle next is there any materials which can be dissolved in water let us see so in these objects do you find anything that we can dissolve in water you might think that ink can be dissolved in water but no ink only mixes with water there is no dissolving that is taking place but if we had collected salt or sugar these materials are dissolvable in water so in our objects we do not have any materials that are dissolved in water is there any material which turns into manure after mixing with soil so anything that is organic like fruits flowers peels of vegetables will turn into manure after mixing with soil let us see if we have any materials like that so yes we do have a flower with us which will turn into manure after mixing with soil therefore our answer to this question is a tick mark now one of our children is realizing oh the material i have bought with me are in various forms similarly even you can also compare the materials that you have collected with the materials collected by your friend from the above activity you can understand that materials are in different forms in their shape color brightness solubility etc isn't it solubility is does it or does it not dissolve in water so you have learned that the materials you have collected are of different shapes colors brightness solubility etc now in the next section we will learn how these materials are available in nature so next section matter or object how are the materials available in nature created so we can see so many materials around us right both natural and man made you can see man made materials like benches books pen paper water bottle and many more and you can see natural materials like plants trees flowers soil and many more so how were these materials available in nature are created how were these materials created to understand this let us do an experiment in this experiment we are taking some chalk powder okay and when we dip our finger and sprinkle it slowly over a plain surface then we observe the surface carefully through a convex lens using a convex lens we can have a magnifying effect where we can observe small particles bigger okay so you must be able to see small small individual ch chalk particles right do you think we can divide these particles further can we take one of those particles and cut it more do you think it is possible so our children is saying it is not possible is it not possible for us to divide them further so we can observe that although we try with our own hands it is not possible to divide it further 
so it is not possible for us with our hands to divide that chalk particle further scientifically materials are called as matter okay and matter is made up of small particles the smallest piece of matter is called as particle okay students so although the chalk particle is not able to be divided by you that doesn't mean it's the single particle it is made up of many 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 smaller particles which we cannot see with our naked eyes we will learn more about them in our future classes for the next activity think read the instances given below and try to remember if you have experienced any how did fragrant particles reach your nose from the open scent bottle so whenever you open a scent bottle or a cream bottle you would smell a very nice smell coming from it right how did those particles of the scent come from the scent bottle to your nose the next question is how does your nose feel that the neighboring room is being swept so if you are sitting in your classroom and there is a neighboring room that is being cleaned and there is a lot of dust particles coming from there you would start sneezing and coughing correct so how did those dust particles come from there to your room next did you notice any collection of dark particles when firewood is burnt or kerosene lamp is lit so if you have observed in your houses wherever you keep lamps if you see the roof you would notice some small dark particles on the roof also when you look carefully at the area when firewood is burnt you will notice the collection of dark particles what happened to the firewood or the oil where did these dark particles come from in this lesson we are going to answer all of these questions particles present in matter are invisible so like we learned although we were able to see small particles of chalk in that particle many many more invisibly small particles are present matter is made up of very minute particles minute means very small hence visible matter consists of invisible particles now it is time for a quiz the question is you have to say if it is true or false matter is made up of particles which cannot be seen by our eyes if you need time to think you can pause the video the answer is true matter is made up of particles which cannot be seen by our eyes they are invisible to our eyes we can see them with the help of very powerful equipments like microscopes i will show you a depiction of what atoms or particles in matters would look like so this is an example next the question is what do you mean by matter so we have just learned this and i have added the answer for you scientifically materials are called matter okay materials are called as matter and visible matter is made up of invisible particles so these are the two things that we learnt about matter for the next activity they have asked us take a material and divide it into minute pieces okay write the name of the matter which you have divided into minute pieces so say like we already learned when we divide something into minute pieces we can call it as particles of that matter so supposing you have divided a piece of paper then they would be called as particles of paper you can collect the powder of the available matter and show it to your friends in the classroom in the next part we will be learning about the properties of matter so matter has special properties these properties can be understood with the help of 
some experiments and activities. So let us start with these experiments. The first property of matter is matter occupies space. If you see the matter around you, supposing you have kept a pen on your table, then if you want to keep another pencil or another pen on the exact same location, you won't be able to do it. You will be able to either keep it on top of that pen or you have to move the pen on the table and then keep it in the same position. This is because the pen on your table is occupying its own space. Now, let us look at the activity to understand this property more. The activity is pour the wheat flour or any other flour into the bowl. From a box, you have to pour wheat flour or any flour into a bowl. Again, try to fill the bowl so that the flour does not spill. So, if you can see here, what is happening is, this bowl is already filled with the flour. Next, you are trying to add more flour to the same bowl. It is not possible to add more flour to the same bowl, correct? Because it will overspill. Let us answer these questions one by one. Was it possible? We can see that it was not possible because once the bowl is full, the flour will overspill. Right? And did you completely fill the bowl? Yes, if we pour it from the box carefully, we will be able to completely fill the bowl. What should be done to pour some more flour into the bowl? Why? So, if you want to use the bowl again, you have to transfer the flour that is already there in the bowl to some other container and then use the bowl to pour some more flour. Why is that so? Because once it is already containing maximum quantity of flour, you can't add more flour to it, right? The volume is completely filled. It was impossible to fill the bowl completely with the entire quantity of the flour present in the box. Why? So, they are asking us, why can we not transfer everything in the box to the bowl? If the box is big and contains more flour and the bowl is small and cannot hold that quantity of flour, we cannot transfer it completely to the bowl because the volume that is occupied by the flour in the box is more than the volume of the bowl. So even the wheat flour needs space to go, right? Even we need some place to sit down. Just like that, wheat flour also needs some place to go. If it is already occupied by other wheat flour, this wheat flour will not be able to go into the same place. This is because wheat flour needs a space. Because wheat flour occupies space. Okay? So, I have given a brief answer to that question. More flour is present in the box and wheat flour needs space. For the next activity, the experiment is put a glass beaker completely filled with water on a plate. Slowly immerse a stone of appropriate size tied with a thread into the beaker as shown in the picture. So, what they have done is they have taken a beaker, they have full, filled it completely with water. So, it is completely filled with water till here. And then they have put it on a plate. They put it on a plate to avoid water overspilling and wetting the table. Right? And then they have taken a stone that is tied to a thread. When you slowly immerse the stone into the beaker like I have shown here, what happens? First, you can observe that water is spilling out from the beaker. What happened when the stone is immersed into the beaker? So, as and when you slowly immerse the stone, water will start spilling out. Why did the water spill out? One of our children is asking. So, Think about this. We have learned that matter needs its own space. Correct? But when the glass was completely filled with water, there is no more space left for the stone. When you are immersing the stone, something needs to make space for the stone. 
so what is happening is that much water is flowing out to make space for that stone from this activity we can learn that matter occupies space so this is the first property of matter that we are learning it is that matter occupies space a matter cannot occupy the place of another at the same time so two things cannot occupy the same space at the same time that is why water spilled out to make space for the stone now write the names of a some matter around you this is an activity that you can do on your own what you have to do is sit down in one place and look at the substances around you there may be books pens pencils water bottle cup plate etc around you you need to make a list of those matters around you they have given us one hint air is also a matter okay so there is air all around you although you can't see it okay air is a matter and air occupies space in its container we learnt about this in our lesson air air occupies space in its container we did many experiments about this one experiment is blowing air into the balloon balloon that was small becomes big because air occupies space they have repeated the same experiment here so the activity is blow air into a balloon particles in the air are rarely distributed rarely distributed means they are not sitting very close to one another okay they are sitting far away from each other so particles of one matter can be accommodated in another in which particles are rarely distributed so they are saying particles of one matter can be accommodated in another in which particles are rarely distributed what this means is if particles are sitting far away from each other if you put enough pressure into them they can move closer to each other and make space for extra particles so you might have observed this in any balls like throw balls volley balls etc when there is not complete air inside them they would have become soft and not easy to play with so you need to pump air into these particles how do you pump air into the ball or volley ball you put pressure using a pump air was already present in the balls but when you put in more air they just become more compactly distributed and become high pressure particles what is happening in this type of compression through this animation so if you can see the air particles in the initial state that is right now they are far away from each other but after being compressed you can see that they are moving closer to each other to make space for other matter so in case of rare distribution rarely distributed means particles are far away from each other they can be pushed closer together to make space for other matter for the next activity add some sugar or salt into a beaker fully filled with water without allowing the water to spill out how is it possible discuss with your teacher so when you add some salt or sugar into a beaker filled with water you can observe that if you do it carefully the water does not spill out so does this mean that the salt or sugar does not require space no salt or sugar also requires its own space but when salt or sugar mixes with water it is a soluble substance therefore it dissolves in water when a substance dissolves in water the chemical composition of the water changes and the particles of the salt or sugar forms close bonds with water so when salt or sugar is added into the water there is bonding between the particles of salt or sugar and the water particles when this happens they occupy space more closely with each other this is why the water does not spill out 
The next activity is think. What happens when the tube of a vehicle, what happens to the tube of a vehicle when it is filled with excess air? Why? So, if you have seen air being pumped into the tires of cycles, they stop it after the tires become hard. If you keep on pumping, then what happens? Then the tire would explode with air. So, what happens is the tire would burst open and it will get teared. This is because the volume of air inside the tire can occupy only that much space. If you keep on pumping or forcing air in, that air needs some space. In order to find that space, it will create a tear in the tire and it will come out. Okay, so that is what happens when you fill it with excess air. So, we learned that matter is made up of various visible and invisible particles. So, the matter that we see is visible and it is made up of many particles that we might be able to see with our naked eye. But each of those particles is further made up of a smaller invisible particles. The next property is matter has mass. To understand this property, let us look into the first activity. The activity is take a weighing balance and note the position of the needle. Write it here. So, if you can see the weighing balance, if the both the scales are empty, then the weighing balance would be pointing to the center. Therefore, the weighing balance would be pointing to the center if both the uh, scales are empty. Next, they are asking us to put any material of 50 grams in one pan and note the position of the needle. So, once you have put the 50 grams weight in one pan, what happens is the needle, it tips towards the heaviest part of the scale. Therefore, the needle is not pointing towards the center anymore. It is pointing towards the heavy scale. Why does this happen? This is because you have put in weight on one side. Okay, The weighing scale is designed to go down when there is heavier scale in one side. That is why the needle moves towards the heavier side. Weigh different materials you have and those which are available in your classroom with your friends. So you can take weight of different materials that are present around you. And the next activity is think. Is there any matter without weight? You might be able to think of some materials which are very light. So if you hold on a chalk piece in your hand, it is so light that it does not seem that it has any weight. But if you hold on to many chalk pieces or a box of chalk pieces in your hand, you will find out that it is heavy. This weight comes from each individual chalk piece, correct? So, everything that is matter has its own weight, even air. You might think it is very light, but still, all matter has weight. Next, place a matter in a pan of the balance. So, a matter is anything, any particle around you. You just have to place it in one of the pans of the balance and observe. What happens? It goes down. Like we saw in our experiment, it goes down because it has weight. Is it possible to keep both the pans equal? If not, why? So, once you have placed some weight in one of the pans, it is not possible to keep both of them equal because one plate would be heavier. That is why it will go down automatically. Hence, it is not possible to keep both the pans equal if only one of them has some matter you a small image of the weighing clip where we can see the needle clearly. So, you can see when you are putting weight on one side, it is going down and then it is coming back to normal once the weights are removed. Okay? So, that is the needle that you can see. Activity is try to lift a bag with 3 kg rice and another same type of empty bag. Write your experience here. So, I will leave this activity to you. You can lift your school bag which is empty and then you can fill it with your books and lift the same bag again. 
you will find out that when it is filled with substances, the bag is heavier and it is more difficult for you to lift. So this is because matter has mass. Okay. Next, matter is the total sum of many particles. It has mass. Matter is made up of small particles. We already learned this, that matter is made up of small particles. Total number of particles in a matter depend upon its weight. So if it is heavier, it has more. And if it is lighter, it has less. The materials which occupy space and possesses mass is called matter. Therefore, matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. So when you can see, all the objects around you become matter. Now, it is time for a quiz. The question is, what are the two properties of matter? We just learned this. The answer is, first, matter occupies space and second, matter has mass. So these are the two properties of matter. You can write the same in the activity that is given here. What are the properties of matter right here? The first one is matter occupies space and second one is matter has mass. Okay students, this is the end of part one of the lesson nature of matter. I will see you all in part 2.